First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. The Jacksonville National Weather Service Office says we're on track for this to be the hottest July ever. This is WUFT's First at Five. I'm Noeli Mary Suarez. And I'm Charlize Ramos. We've seen and felt temperatures rise to the triple digits several times this summer. WFT's Bianca Smith went to a local auto shop to see how the heat impacts how we drive. It's no surprise that we've been part of a summer record setting and even deadly in some parts heat wave. The U of weather team says here at home it's been hotter than average 22 out of the last 23 days. As drivers take to the roads during this heat, they need to be cautious of the changes with their vehicles and their environment. The National Weather Service has released their prediction for the next three months, and it's going to be extra hot. The Climate Prediction Center says that there's a 60 to 70 percent chance that temperatures are going to be above average. For new students touring the University of Florida, it's been brutal just to get into the car. I feel like I'm about to get cooked alive, so I mean, we like to have um, sunshades up in the car to kind of um, combat the heat and we immediately kick on the air, but it takes a minute for it to really get going. Like us, our cars don't do well in extreme heat. Rachel Waka is the owner of a city auto repair and says during the summer they can get an influx of customers due to heat damage. Another big thing that we see in the heat is batteries. Um, the cold cranking ampage uh, gets real low and people have a hard time starting their vehicles. Um, and it's really, really important, especially these newer cars, because we have so many computers in the car. The most common sign of heat damage is the battery dying. During the extra hot summers, Rachel's crew sees a lot of AC, tire, and wiper blade issues. Rachel says that one of the easiest things you can do to make sure that your car is doing okay is just keep an eye on the temperature gauge. And also, maintenance is key. While it may be tempting to just hop in the car and blast your AC after a hot day in the sun, services like this don't come cheap. They can run you anywhere between $500 to $800. It's recommended to use a sunshade, use a car covered, and to make sure to keep up with your fluids. Reporting live in the newsroom, Bianca Smith, WUFT News. Pop-up storms have been taking a bite out of the intense heat this week. And this afternoon, thunderstorms are scattered across north central Florida. The UF weather radar is picking up heavy pockets of rain for our area. Let's get right over to UF forecaster Sienna Silvestre, who is tracking the storms in your latest forecast. That's right. First on temperatures, though, and then we'll get to rain. It is going to be 91 here in Gainesville. Now we can see here on the western coast of Florida, 87 cross city, 87 as well. Cedar Key. These temperatures are slightly cooler than those in the rest of north central Florida, and that is due to those storms that we are currently feeling currently feeling scattered storms all across north central Florida, but those storm cells there and feeling those higher intensity rain there in Crystal River as well as up in Perry. Now zooming back to home, those in the Gainesville area can expect those a little bit of scattered storms right now as well as a, a small chance of those thunderstorms as we go. But coming up hourly, Excuse me, coming up, expect those high temperatures as well as that rain to persist going into the week, as well as how those tropics are calmer as we have seen in the past. Coming up. Former UF President Kent Fox has agreed to serve as interim president. This comes after the resignation of current President Ben Sass. We told you late last week Sass is resigning to focus on his family, primarily health issues with his wife. His last day is July 31st and Fox would take office on August 1st. A board of trustees meeting is being held in less than 30 minutes where the, inter the interim role is expected to become official. official. Fox served as UF president from 2015 to 2023. A Lake City man will spend the next 50 years in prison for a home invasion robbery and a shooting in Gainesville. Kobe Archer was sentenced Monday. Investigators say back in June of 2022, they responded to a home on Southwest 35th Place. They discovered the victim suffering from gunshot wounds. Gainesville police quickly identified the suspects and vehicle involved. Through the investigation efforts, they determined Archer was the shooter. Last month during his trial, Archer asked the judge to decide his sentence. 
The Florida Highway Patrol needs your help identifying who struck and killed a pedestrian in Marion County last night. Troopers say it happened just before 10 off County Road 25. They believe a vehicle was traveling east and the 71 year old victim was lying down within the lane of travel when he, he was hit. If you have any information about this accident, you're urged to call the Highway Patrol. And police in Gainesville is asking public's help to find out who is behind a shooting earlier this month. They are looking for the suspects in this black Cadillac CSRX. Detectives say the shooting happened at D's Liquor on Southeast 4th Avenue. They say the suspects fired off several shots in a crowd in front of the store. Investigators are asking anyone who may have seen this SUV around Gainesville between July 9th and the 12th to come forward. We're working to learn if anyone was hurt in the shooting. It's scallop season in Florida, and as divers take to the water to harvest these shellfish, safety remains a top priority. I got to head out to sea with FWC officers to learn what people should be on the lookout when they are boating. As the Florida coast becomes a hot spot for divers and boaters, an increase in safety warnings come along with them. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is reminding people to use and be on the lookout for divers down flags. This red flag with a white stripe is used to indicate that there is a diver below. Officer Gabrielle Balling says that safety is of utmost importance and that everyone is operating in a safe manner while on the water. Um, and we're out there looking for people who don't have divers down flag while they're in the water diving. Um, we address that through non-criminal infractions, so it's a ticket. Um, and then we also address other issues such as somebody operating too fast within those idle speed zones. A properly displayed flag must be placed at the highest point of the boat, measure 20 by 24 inches, and have a stiffener to keep extended. The FWC encourages boaters to maintain a 360 degree awareness. That includes what you can hear and see. And when you're out scalloping in the water, it starts with displaying the flag correctly so. One of the main things that I would like to point out is a 300 foot number that is the main regulation when it comes to the dive flag. So divers must stay within 300 feet of their properly displayed flags and vessel operators, if they would like to operate their vessel above an idle speed, must be outside of that 300 foot range. These safety measures are enforced to prevent a tragedy on the water and to make sure divers and boaters can enjoy their summer out at sea. Coming up next when First at Five returns, Vice President Harris hitting the tramp campaign trail to speak to Americans. The work ahead of her over the next three months as we head towards Election Day. Plus, the head of the Secret Service is out of job after public pressure about the agency's failings. Why Florida lawmakers say she made the right decision. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Just one day after her heated testimony in front of Congress, Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheeto has resigned. It came after widespread calls for her to step down after the assassination attempt on former President Trump. We told you Monday she faced tough questions from lawmakers of both parties over what she called failings of the agency. Cheeto said in her resignation letter that she made the difficult decision to leave the agency with a heavy heart and that she doesn't want her departure to distract agents from, her, from their mission. During her House oversight appearance, Cheeto acknowledged that there were significant and colossal problems with the security at the rally, but still rebuffed demands for her resignation. Look, when you take these jobs, and I'm a former director of emergency management in the state of Florida, when you take jobs like that, you know that if disaster happens on your watch and you don't do a good job, okay, you're going to be held accountable. When we had a bad response to Katrina, the FEMA administrator resigned. When we had January 6th, the head of Capitol Police resigned. And she is doing the right thing. She has to be held accountable. The Secretary of Homeland Security has named a new acting director of the Secret Service. A statement from Secretary Alejandro Mayorka said Deputy Director Ronald Rowe will serve as the acting director. Rowe is described as a 24-year veteran of the Secret Service. After raising $100 million in 48 hours, Vice President Kamala Harris hit the campaign trail for the first time today, heading to the battleground state of Wisconsin. Meanwhile, her potential opponent, former President Donald Trump, and his new running mate sharpened their attacks against the Democratic Party. And as Alice Barr reports, all this is happening as President Biden returns to Washington today for the first time since his COVID diagnosis. 
Vice President Kamala Harris hitting the campaign trail for the first time in her quest for the nation's top job. You all helped us win in 2020. And in 2024, we will win again. Rallying in battleground Wisconsin as she quickly consolidates support to become her party's presidential nominee. Ours is a fight for the future. And it is a fight for freedom. The majority of pledged delegates to the Democratic National Convention have now endorsed the vice president. And today... Boy, oh boy, are we enthusiastic. She earned the backing of the top Democrats in Congress. Kamala Harris will fight for our future. I'm proud to strongly endorse Kamala Harris to be the 47th president of the United States of America. At the same time, President Biden returning to the White House after recovering from COVID, preparing to address the nation tomorrow night about his decision to drop out of the race. He called in yesterday to an event with campaign staffers. I'm watching you, kid. I love you. I love you, Joe. Former President Trump and his running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, shifting gears to sharpen their attacks against their new likely opponent. Kamala Harris is a million times worse. The former prosecutor making her case against the former president. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. And in this campaign, I promise you, I will proudly put my record against his any day of the week. And introducing American voters to her vision for the future. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Governor Ron DeSantis continues to speak out against proposed Constitutional Amendment 3, which would legalize recreational marijuana in Florida. The proposed amendment comes eight years after Florida voters legalized medical marijuana in the state. Amendment 3 says, in part, that it would allow adults 21 years or older to possess, purchase, or use marijuana products and marijuana accessories for non-medical personal consumption by smoking, ingestion, or otherwise. Speaking at the Florida Sheriff's Association conference today, DeSantis said the amendment is more sweeping than what the ballot summary says the summary, it doesn't tell you really what the amendment says. That's why it should not have been let on the ballot. I mean, the court's job is to not allow things on the ballot if the summary is an inaccurate reflection. Like all proposed constitutional amendments, Amendment 3 would need support from more than 60 percent of Florida voters in the November general election to pass. Calling all chicken enthusiasts because Dave's Hot Chicken just hatched their newest spot in Gainesville. The restaurant originally started in a parking lot in East Hollywood in 2017. Now, the spicy sensation has over 205 restaurants across the United States, Canada, and the Middle East. Dave's Hot Chicken will be located at 3424 Southwest Archer Road and opens this Friday. The Marion County Public Library System is looking for volunteer readers for their children's program. Reading out loud helps young kids recognize rhyming patterns, develop vocabulary, and better prepare for school. Volunteers would share their love of reading and learning by providing monthly story times. Volunteers will receive training and reading materials. If interested, applications can be found at all nine public library locations or online at library.marionfl.org. Applications should be submitted before August 26. And it may not feel like the holiday season, but that's not stopping city leaders from planning Ocala's annual Light Up Ocala event. The 40th annual tradition will take place on Saturday, November 23rd in downtown Ocala. The event kicks off the holidays, attracting thousands to the area. Guests can enjoy seeing over 100 vendors, live entertainment, and a kids zone. Light Up Ocala will run from 3 to 8 p.m. Ocala and the rest of North Central Florida is getting lit up with some lightning this evening. I will track tonight's storm next. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome back. The storm cell that was over the UF campus has seemed to have broken up, but other storms are in the area with this cell right here currently moving towards Green Grove. But as we pan out to the rest of North Central Florida, scattered storms are visible, especially on the western coast in areas like Crystal Springs, Cross City, as well as up towards the northern coast. Now, 
If you haven't seen it, you might have heard of it. The Saharan dust has moved from the Sahara Desert over the Atlantic and is now here in Florida. Expect it to stay around from today going well into Thursday and even up to Friday morning. Now this dust mixed with those showers that we have been feeling and will continue as this dust continues to move throughout Florida might have created has created something called dirty rain. It's happened when the dust mixed with the water droplets that hit the ground. And now this isn't of any major health concern, but you will might see some residue on your car and as well as some vibrant sunsets. Now this isn't the end of the Saharan dust. It, there is more still expected to move across the Atlantic. Currently, we are seeing the Saharan dust right in the specific area, kind of as more of a haze. Now, good news though, this does hinder tropical development. So a sigh of relief for those who felt the strength of barrel. But now moving back home into our future cast, right now around, currently around 7 p.m., expect those storms to be around the I-75 corridor and this exact current and the similar rain pattern as we go into tomorrow. There's more intense storms around 4 p.m. tomorrow and then breaking up as we go into the night. Now taking a live look out at Century Tower, partly cloudy skies, a little bit of sun rays poking through, but pretty much cloud cover, a little bit of wind, no gusts, 91 degree temperature. Our feels like though at 102. Now taking a look at our heat indexes across North Central Florida, 104 here in Gainesville, 102 Jacksonville, 98 St. Augustine. But as we go for the rest of the week, expect 90s mid to low throughout the rest of the week and those rain chances to stay between 70 and 80%. So as you're walking out the door, remember to put on that sunscreen, hydrate, but as well as pack an umbrella. Lastly, if you've gotten your hands on AA Sports College Football 25, you might want to check out the Ultimate Team Mode, where you'll find Florida legend Team Tebow. His card is one of the toughest to land, as he is the first quarterback in the game to earn the 90 overall designation. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really looking forward to the Olympics this weekend. I know, I'm so excited. I love the Olympics. I can't wait to cheer on Team USA. I also can't wait for the weekend, so what's the weather going to look like? Yeah, so the weather for the rest of the week is expected to be hot and rainy. Those elevated rain temperature, rain chances between 70 and 80% and temps in the mid-90s. Thanks for joining us. We're back here tomorrow for another edition of First at Five. But your North Central Florida news is always on at WUFT.org and on all of our social media platforms. Have a good night.